My name is Richard and I live in Denver, Colorado. Hi, I'm Hannibal Brooks and I'm Malcolm Brooks. We're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hi, my name is Yoko Rosenbaum and I'm a student at the University of Southern California. of hope that will be felt from coast to coast in the United States of America. Thank you. How about that? Folks are pumped. Wow. So Patty. It's amazing. We can feel the support. It's extraordinary. Please welcome to the stage, Mayor Pete Buttigieg. I have seen in the ruins of factories my city answer those who said we were a dying community by rising up together to build a better future. I have seen what America can do and so have you. After all, you're looking at someone who, as a young man growing up, wondered if something deep inside of him meant that he would forever be an outsider, would never wear the uniform, never be accepted, never know love. And now you are looking at that same young man, a veteran, a mayor, happily married, asking for your vote for President of the United States. I am ready for a new generation of politics and a new generation of leadership. I trust Mayor Pete, and I am eager for him to become our next president. So earlier this year, I found myself on a stage at a high school in South Bend, John Adams High School where we held an event for all of the young people about to graduate who had made that solemn decision to serve. And there was a voice in my head that whole time I was watching them saying, do not let them down. Do not let anybody play games with the lives of these young people. These are young people who are going to raise their right hands and make a promise to this country. And that promise is a two-way commitment. Part of that promise is that America will not take their lives and their service lightly. That they will not be used as pawns in politics nor as props in a show, because this is not a show and it is not a game. It is a promise that we will support our service members throughout their military journey and embrace them when they return and when they leave active duty. One of the reasons I'm running for president is to be a commander in chief who knows what it is to be sent abroad on the orders of a president, 
a commander-in-chief who will keep America's promise to those who kept their promise to serve this nation. And when the time came for me to deploy, in the dust of a war zone, I learned to trust my life to people that I had nothing in common with sometimes, besides the flag that was Velcroed to our shoulders. But that was enough. The people who got in my vehicle did not care whether I was a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent. They cared about whether my M4 was locked and loaded and whether I had trained on how to use it. They did not care what country my father immigrated from, whether he was documented or not, whether I was going home to a girlfriend or a boyfriend. They cared whether I had selected the route with the fewest IED threats. They just wanted to get home safe, just like I did. The women and men who come home from war are not unblemished heroes or broken souls. They are people, they are us. They are our fellow citizens who ask to be viewed neither as heroes nor as victims, but as fellow citizens who deserve to be cared for with the care that they've earned and wish for the chance to continue to serve, to belong to the life of their community. People who serve are not a burden. Indeed, they are the greatest asset that America has. And it is the responsibility not only of the government, but of all of us to realize that full potential of those who serve right here at home. And when I am commander in chief, we will. A decade or more from now, I want to be able to return to those young people that I saw at John Adams High School in South Bend, to find out about how things have unfolded for them. I want to be able to salute their service and look them in the eye knowing that if and when they were called to fight, it was only ever in just and necessary conflicts that kept the peace and advanced American values and interests. I will tell them, thank you for your service. And I look forward to a day that when I do, I will do so knowing that our nation's gratitude will be expressed not only in our words, but in our works. This is the future that we together can build for everyone who wears the uniform of our country. That is the America that I am determined to bring about, and that will be my greatest responsibility and highest calling as your Commander-in-Chief. I support Pete Buttigieg because I think he has a clear, smart, and comprehensive plan for getting things done in politics, which is what we need to solve the problems facing our country today. And I support Pete because he's not just an idealist, he's a candidate with ideals and a pragmatic approach. That means he doesn't just want to do the right thing, he actually knows how to get it done. Right, this country's an experiment and we need an innovative approach to solve the problems we're facing today. We are now just a few months away from the first in the nation primary. And presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg is also in the state today. Making his way across New Hampshire. South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg is on the road today in New Hampshire. He's in the middle of a four-day trip. He's bringing his message directly to voters there. We have been so thrilled in the course of this bus tour crisscrossing New Hampshire. We are on the Buttigieg bus. And the whole idea behind this is four days on the record the whole time. Pete Buttigieg with just a couple staffers as well as a whole bunch of reporters. We're going all across the state of New Hampshire. We're going to have uh, reporters on board for lengthy, candid, on-the-record discussions. On the Buttigieg bus, no questions off limit. Uh, as a campaign, I think our focus has to continue to be on our message. It served us well. One Democratic hopeful spending a third day on his bus tour. Uh, the press always have new questions for you, and it's been uh, uh, fun to see us go beyond the, the kind of two-minute uh, cable appearance and a quick answer. Yeah, yeah. this is the right for new generation. I feel sometimes like I'm interacting with a, uh, a vetting committee uh, for deciding what the future is going to be like, and I know that decision time is approaching. So my only question is, are you ready to deliver on that hope and make us proud of our country of what we do in 2020? Well, I'm pretty sure that you are going to deliver me a win in New Hampshire, make me the nominee and the president, and that we will make history together. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. And I will see you on the trail. Thank you. I support Pete Buttigieg for president because as a mayor, as a veteran, and as a child of an immigrant like myself, Pete's life experiences uniquely qualify him to become a truly great president. 
He also recognizes that his generation and my own have the most at stake in this upcoming election. We can no longer afford to stick to the status quo. With Pete as my candidate, I know that we can usher in a new generation of leadership and win the era. Fight on. Please welcome to the stage, Mayor Pete Buttigieg. The first time I came to this state was as a volunteer to knock on doors for a presidential candidate, a young man with a funny name. And we knew the stakes were high then. The stakes are colossal now. This country cannot afford four more years of Donald Trump. We will not recognize it if he gets reelected. We know what is at stake. But I didn't just come here to end the era of Donald Trump. I'm here to launch the era that must come next. I am asking you to picture that first day the sun comes up in this country and Donald Trump is no longer the president of the United States. A happy thought for sure, an end to the chaos and the corruption and the tantrums and the tweets, but what comes next? The sun's going to come up over a country even more divided and torn up over politics than we are today. With crises that still require urgent action. I am running to be the president who will stand amid the rubble, pick up the pieces of our divided nation and lead us toward real action to do right by Americans who have waited for far too long. I am ready to gather up an American majority that is hungry for change, that is done with division. We're ready to build this majority. A majority ready to deliver the most progressive reform to health care in 50 years. Medicare for all who want it, honoring your decision over whether and when you want it. We will fight when we must fight, but I will never allow us to get so wrapped up in the fighting that we start to think fighting is the point. The point is what lies on the other side of the fight. And what lies on the other side of that fight is the hope of an American experience defined not by exclusion, but by belonging. And if talking about hope and belonging sounds optimistic to you for a time like this, fine. Call it optimistic, but do not call it naive. Because I believe these things not based on my age, but based on my experience. I have seen in the dust of a war zone Americans who had nothing in common besides the flags on our shoulders learn to trust each other with our lives. I have seen in the ruins of factories my city answer those who said we were a dying community by rising up together to build a better future. I have seen what America can do and so have you. After all, you're looking at someone who, as a young man growing up, wondered if something deep inside of him meant that he would forever be an outsider, would never wear the uniform, never be accepted, never know love. And now you are looking at that same young man, a veteran, a mayor, happily married, asking for your vote for President of the United States. That's why I believe in this country. We know that the purpose of the presidency is not the glorification of the president. It is the unification of the American people. That is why we have the office. Are you ready to turn the page to a new era together? Then let us make history together.
and we will have a lot to celebrate in November of next year, and we will know where to go from there. Thank you, Iowa.